So, moving on to epidemiology, it is commonly called as rule of 10. That is, 10 percent of cases are extraordinary, 10 percent are bilateral, 10 percent of cases are familial, 10 percent are malignant. Similarly, 10 percent are incidental and 10 percent recurrent cases are there. So, what is the significance of this? This sort of questions are commonly asked in exams to the postgraduates when they come across such cases. So, before we move on to the few chromosome atomopus, say, let us see how the catecholamines, each and every catecholamines uh, and how it works, uh, what are all the individual effects of catecholamines over heart rate, mean arterial pressure. So, in case of few chromosome atoma, these are all mostly important catecholamines which are secreted are epinephrine, norepinephrine and dopamine. So, epinephrine when you see it is going to increase heart rate, increase the mean arterial pressure and cardiac output. Norepinephrine on the contrary it is going to reduce the heart rate, increases the mean arterial pressure and there might be a equivocal results over the cardiac output. Unlike uh, epinephrine it need not always increase cardiac output, it sometimes can decrease the cardiac output. Whereas, dopamine can increase the heart rate and cardiac output and mean arterial pressure, but to a much lesser extent than the epinephrine. So, depending on the catecholamine which is being secreted, the effects are going to be different. So, it is very important for our clinical assessment whether the patient is having tachycardia or bradycardia, so that we can clearly identify to some extent whether the tumor is a uh, epinephrine secreting tumor or norepinephrine or dopamine secreting tumor. Most of the literature says malignant pheochromocytoma secretes dopamine as a catecholamine. So, why we need to know is by clinical judgment if you are able to identify whether what is the uh, catecholamine being secreted, it will be easy for us to manage. During our management, it might help for easy facilitation of using drugs. So, coming to the signs and symptoms, usually pheochromocytoma, we have a triad of symptoms for diagnosis that is episodic, hypertension, headache and sweating. The most important thing is these attacks are paroxysmal. Patients usually will not have the symptoms all or at all times. Whenever there is a situation where catecholamines are secreted, it can result in hypertension, headache and sweating. This is a classic feature of pheochromocytoma. There are some other signs and symptoms like orthostatic hypertension, blurring of vision, papilledema, weight loss, polyuria, polydipsia and constipation all because of catecholamine excess. So, when we talk about pheochromocytoma, for anesthesiology point of view, the cardiac manifestations are very, very important because all these cardiac elements are going to have an impact on the heart. So, these are all the cardiac manifestations like it can precipitate sinus tachycardia to bradycardia, supraventricular tachycardia or ventricular ectopics and in severe situations can result in ventricular tachycardia. The other important thing is because of excess catecholamine, it increases the myocardial oxygen consumption and it can induce sometimes coronary vasospasm. So, the patients are more prone for myocardial infarction and acute coronary syndrome like symptoms. The other important cardiac manifestations are because of catecholamine excess, the long standing chronic hypertrophy which can result in congestive cardiac failure and also it can result in dilated cardiac myopathy with the systolic as well as diastolic dysfunction. So, now uh, next uh, what we are supposed to know is uh, there are some syndromes or uh, hereditary conditions are associated with pheochromocytoma like Van Hippel-Linda syndrome, multiple endocrine aplasia and neurofibromatosis. So, what is the important thing is in case of these syndromes you are supposed to look for the features of pheochromocytoma. So, whenever we are managing these cases like MEN2 syndrome like which is associated with medullary carcinoma and hyperparathyroidism, there is an association of 50 percent the pheochromocytoma association is there. Similarly, in men 2 b morphonide habitus and mucosal neuromas, so the pheochromocytoma is 50 percent of cases associated and retinoblastoma and cerebellar hemangioma and nephromas and uh, renal and pancreatic cyst like von Hippel-Linda syndrome. Again, the pheochromocytoma is in the associated to be in 50 percent of cases. So, whenever we come across such hereditary syndrome, we are supposed to look for pheochromocytomas, otherwise we will land up in an emergency situation where we will land up in an emergency adrenal crisis which consists of higher morbidity and mortality. So, moving on to the evaluation, so whenever a patient coming of pheochromocytoma, we should do a multidisciplinary evaluation which includes surgeon, anesthesiologist and most important is the endocrinologist. So, the evaluation should be focused on three areas that is end organ damage, the preoperative medications which we are supposed to impose on the patient which have an impact on intra-op and post-op and the most important thing is whether we are administering appropriate dose of preoperative medications which has attained the goals so that the morbidity and mortality are reduced. <music>